If you're anything like me, every time you go to an airport and you look up at the control tower, you wonder to yourself, what exactly happens up there behind those tinted windows? How do the controllers know what any aircraft is doing at any point in time and where they should be telling it to go? I have to give a big thank you for this video to Air Services Australia who did reach out to me and asked if I wanted to come up and have a look at what goes on inside the air traffic control tower here at Sydney Airport. I've never replied to an email as fast as I replied to that one. Frosty 518, wind 080 degrees, 5 knots, tailwind 1, runway 34 left, good left. This is our lighting panel. So on the taxiways there's a row of red lights, oh, yeah. and that's to signify to an aircraft that there's a runway ahead of them. They're not supposed to cross the red stop bars unless they've been given an instruction by air traffic control. That's all the different holding points that aircraft can be at. This is, is to represent our main runway at Sydney. 3-4 left, 1-6 right. So when I give an instruction to line up, I'll drop the stop bar. This screen here is on my phones. So we have lines to the radar controllers across the road there in the radar unit. Hot lines to all the different positions in the tower. This screen here, this has all of our weather information. This is to signify that runway 3-4 left and runway 3-4 right are the runways in use at the moment. Our crossing runway, runway 0725, is not active at the moment. And then each runway threshold has wind data to tell us what the wind is on each threshold. This is our ground radar, so it gives you a good idea of where everything's moving. Very useful at night time or when we have the occasional fog. And this screen over here, this is our air traffic monitor. We're allowed to use this to monitor separation, but we don't use it as a separation tool. Finally, this is my strip display. The blues are for departures, so these are departures that have gone, and the whites are for arrivals. The SMC controller will give me a departure when they're finished with it. This one here is a REC 6868. That tells you the aircraft type and its wake turbulence category, which is medium. It tells you its destination, which is double, and that's Sydney and its initial tracking points. What I do then, the aircraft calls ready and I give them a little tick to say that he's ready. And I'll drop it down to this menu and that tells the departures controllers who are going to be talking to it after I'm finished what the next order of departure is so they can tell who's going to be coming next. And then I write in some initial tracking instructions which will be a heading of left 230. Rex 6868, sign heading of left 230. Line up and wait, from me 34 left. Life as an air traffic controller Everyone has watched Pushing Tin, everyone's watched all those, you know, air traffic control movies in Hollywood. It looks stressful, you're sweating, you're bashing the desk. <laughs> Is it a stressful job? Um, no. Overall, it's, it's not a stressful job. No. Not not stress like these movies. What we try and do as well is we try and give people the correct amount of stress. If you're operating you know, with no stress whatsoever. You've actually got a tendency to get bored to make mistakes. So as stress increases, there's a kind of sweet spot, like an optimal zone of stress where you're really performing at your best. We try and keep our controllers in that sweet spot, make sure that they're not bored, but they're not having too much stress. You may be wondering how I actually managed to wangle this visit. Well, like I said, Air Services Australia did reach out to me and ask if I wanted to have a look around. So again, thank you to Air Services for organizing that. Um, I needed a security pass on the gate. My driver's license was taken and recorded. I'm being chaperoned as I'm going around. I only have about 15 or 20 minutes maximum in the cab at the top of the tower as well. And there are certain things up there that I was asked not to film. Certain people up there as well that um, won't be in this video that I was asked not to film as well. So it's a very, very, well, it's kind of what you want and what you would hope for, but it's a very high security part of the airport. Usually he'd be landing on runway 34 right, but for purposes of this filming, we decided to expect him to 34 left. There we go. Yeah. And YouTube audience thanks you, Grant. <laughs> That's great. Thank, thank you. I'm sure Velocity 518 might thank us as well. This might be his last sector of the day. He's probably <laughs> looking to go home. The <laughs> 518 is the He's called on frequency now. Uh, I should make an assessment whether there'd be enough space to get a departure airborne before he comes to the threshold. In this case, the only departure I have is Qantas 842. 
you can see him there and just out the window there. Now there's no way he's going to be able to taxi down to the thresholds and depart before the arrival lands so I'll make the decision to give the priority to the inbound in the show landing claims. Velocity 518, wind 080 degrees, 5 knots, tailwind 1, runway 34 left, the glass. So the aircraft is now landing, he's slowing down, he's going to take the high speed rapid exit. So it's yeah. a, a balancing act that we do all day. And you're deciding that yourself based it's a, on... Yes, yeah, the supervisor, they speak to the supervisor at the terminal control unit. They look at the demand for the runways for the certain hours that we have. And yep. then we just try and be as efficient as we can to make mm. sure that, um, you know, there's not gaps on final that don't need to be there. Mm. Mm. Quantus 842, line up, run me three for that. And then I can issue the takeoff clearance to Quantus. Quantus 842, run me three for left. Straight for takeoff. Climbing nicely. I don't have any more issues. I don't need them anymore, so you can go. Quantus 842, contact departures. Bye bye. We should talk about COVID. I know we all hate talking about it, but the airport is obviously not as busy as it used to be. What yep. kind of levels do you think you're roughly running at? Certainly on average, it's about 950 to 1,000 flights a day pre-COVID. And at the moment, we're running about 700 to 750, depending on the day of the week. So um, we're almost at pre-COVID levels. Mm. Uh, and that's with the international border that's still closed. For people out there who are interested in a career as an air traffic controller, do you think it's still worth pursuing that in the future. I've been doing this now 15 years. It's the best job I can ever have hoped for. You know, every day is different. Great people. You don't need to go to university. You know, you can come straight in. I encourage everybody to come and do the tests. We love having work experience. People come to the units. One last question. I've got a million more, but I'm just I'm not going to hold you up. I know you've got a job to do. What did you do in the tower to keep busy during <coughs> COVID times? Were you still here? It didn't shut. No, no it's never, it's never going to close. The biggest thing that we did, we divided ourselves into teams and we just rotated through that. Generally, you need about nine people here. During COVID, you probably needed about four or five. We never stopped training. Mm. So we were always taking people from the Learning Academy down in Melbourne. Once the international borders open up again, mm -hmm. where's the first place that you'd like to go to? Well, the first place I'm definitely going to go to is um, back to the UK to see my family. Because yeah. I haven't seen them for like a couple of years. So yeah, Same. that'll be it. <laughs> if you are interested in a career as an air traffic controller, I'll put a link down to the careers page on the Air Services website down below. You can see what you could end up doing. You can see the epic views you could have from the top of the tower up there as well. I don't know how you concentrate. I'll just be staring <laughs> at it. But hey, thanks again for your time, mate. You're welcome. Appreciate that. Thanks. thanks.